Shalom, y'all, Sharala. I want to give infinite honors to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rekakadash. That's the name of our Heavenly Father, who to whom the world ignorantly calls God. All right, Bahashem means in the name in ancient Paleo Hebrew. Yahweh Shai is the name of the our great king, who to whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. All right, and uh, Rekakadash means spirit holy in ancient Paleo Hebrew. All right. I also want to give double honors to our teachers, the apostles of Great Millstone, who birthed their double honors. The salutation to my fellow laborers in Yahusha, pushing his truth across the four winds, my beloved brothers, laboring for their penny. All right. Being that the kingdom of heaven is nigh and closer than when we first believed, man. Shalom on to you, I can. Um, I came across this clip of this guy, uh, Captain Tazariak, and um, of ISUBK, and um, this guy, uh, this guy, Polite, who's an enemy of the faith. And um, it's just that it's a blessing that the Most High um, bought us brothers to uh, the Rivers of Living Water at Great Millstone because um, you got to have the whole truth, man. You got to eat the whole road. And like a lot of these camps, they, they just they got parts and pieces of the truth. Uh, some of them might even have a great piece. They might have 80% of the truth, but go off on 20%. And that's not what's going to get you delivered out of the kingdom, man. Now, what, now, you look at this clip. This guy has polite, look like where, where they, they come and conjugate, all right? And, and he's totally going against the scriptures. ISUPK totally goes against the scriptures, all right? And polite. Is a uh, he proclaims he doesn't hide it that he's an unbeliever. So what do the scriptures tell us how to deal with unbelievers? Do it tell us to build? Because in this clip, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play a little snippet of it. Do it tells us the so-called build with unbelievers? No, it don't. What does the scriptures tell us how to deal with people that reject Yah the Mashiach Yahweh? I'm about to get these couple precepts to show, man. These guys, um. And these other camps, man, they they go off to the right and to the left, man. And, and Matthew, the, five, the fifth chapter, the 48 verse, tell us to be perfect. All right? We know the creation is subject to vanity. Us in these uh, chains of darkness, we're prone to go off. But when it comes to the doctrine, the doctrine has to be perfect because the doctrine is what perfects us. All right? The doctrine is what makes us whole. And when you go off on the doctrine, I mean... You're going to lead those that follow you into a ditch, all right, which is ultimately uh, death in Jacob's trouble. And if De Jacob's trouble don't kill you, uh, the, mil the milk is going to clean you up. All right, so I'm going to start off with uh, two precepts before I play the clip. This is uh, 2 Corinthians 6 and 14, and it reads, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, all right? You're not supposed to be bringing an unbeliever in your house, in the so-called holy spot, all right? That's where they break bread at. That's where they had their live shows. The only po people supposed to be in there is believers, or people that's trying to, you know, come to the faith. Believers, all right? For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? If polite come with us, I don't have no fellowship with him. If he come to camp trying to debate, like I'm, you know, a brother might the, might halfway deal with him to edify the camera if he asks certain questions or to edify a young brother that's there. But man, we don't have no 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 uh no reason to be building with an infidel, somebody who don't believe. And what communion have light with darkness? All right, this guy is uh is Dark Vader, man. This guy does not receive the truth. He shoot up Bibles. All right. He's an unbeliever, okay? Why you're not supposed to be sitting down breaking bread with no one like that, all right? And what concord has Yahweh with Belial? And Belial is another word for saying the devil, man, for the wicked, all right? And what part have he that believer, all right? Tazariak is a so-called believer with an infidel, all right? Polite is an infidel. An infidel does not believe. Okay? 
And what have, what agreement have the temple of Yahweh with idols? All right. When you into that commission crap, that shit that polite but does believe in a uh, money or uh, money is his God, man. That's an idol. All right. He's an idol. He mean he believes in idols. OK, for you are the temple of the living power. As Yahweh have said, I would dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their power, and they shall be my people. All right? Holy means to be set apart. All right? Get another precept. Uh, the book of James 4 and 4. It plainly says, Ye adulterers and adulteresses, you know that friendship of the world is enmity with the Most High. I mean, me, me, polite ain't a friend of the prophets. A friend of the prophets is a person that believes, man. All right? If he see the pro the, the prophets and need help, he's there to hit help. Every brother's not a prophet, but they are friends of the prophets. And then a leg number, you're going to have helps, men that believe and help the prophets when they can, when they could. Okay? Whosoever, therefore, would be a friend of this world is enemy of the most high. All right? ISUPK are friends with polite. They are cool with Sinatra. All right, they get down with them. They kick it with them because they're all so-called black people. All right, that's not scriptural. That's not what the scriptures tell us to do. All right, this is what the scriptures tell us how to deal with unbelieving niggas, man. This is uh, First Corinthians, no, Salakia, Second John, one and ten. If there come any of you and bring not this doctrine, all right, polite doesn't bring this doc doesn't bring this doctrine of life. He straight up tell you. Straight up, this is that's that spooky stuff. I don't believe that shit. All right, he tell you straight up, and he talks about it uh, maliciously. He dogs it. He he told her he he he's a blasphemer. Okay, receive him not into your house, neither bid him Godspeed. That's what what this guy uh to Captain Cesario doing. That that's their house where they dwell in it. Where, 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 where two or three are gathered in his name, that's where him and his brothers come to congregate. That's the house of Yahweh Bashim al Shai, man. All right? But when you bring a nigga like that in your house, this is what the scriptures say. For he that bid him God's speed is partake of his evil deeds. There's no reason for, for polite to be in your house, man. There's no reason for him, you bringing a snake ass nigga like that around the brotherhood, man. Okay, now when we're on the highways and byways and somebody like him, a vocab walk up, all right, we it's established that they are enemies and we'll deal with them, we'll dialogue with them. Okay, sometimes we'll, we'll debate the scriptures with them. Okay, but right now we're not in that time no more, man. We're only dealing with the believers, man. But worst case scenario, they came up there, we'll dialogue with them. We're not going to curse them out and hit them with ad, ad hominis uh, insults. OK. But we're not going to be bringing them in our personal area where the brothers come in and barbecue and kick in and fellowship. That's going off. Now, let's listen to what. Let's listen to the line of their dialogue. Listen to this shit. OK. Hey, well, we got our tax exemption, but we still teach about this beast. Now, yeah. I'm gonna skip up a little bit. Get straight to the point. We in. So is the leader. Here. Yeah, so Sinet is the leader. You say some fell on stony ground, etc. So when Bear with me, Yashua. Uh, I had him. Someone come it. in and then they'll just serve the most high and just do it. But this ain't magic in the sense of you come in here and you say, Man, I'm gonna be down with y'all or whatever, and then we put you in some machine like the Matrix and zap you, and then you just doing what it is. Okay. You still have to fight whatever demons you have before you came into this lifestyle. I think so sometimes them demons are more pleasurable to you than yeah. actually serving the most high. Now can a man be righteous mm -hmm. and of God? Can a man be righteous and of God? Void of their membership in the ISUPK. Can God embrace and accept people outside of ISUPK? Absolutely. We would never say, like a lot of people, like we have that stance of uh, we're not affiliated with nobody. That I came, like that. That, but that came into effect. There was a video, this, we started saying that I think in like 2011 or 12. And the reason why we said that is because there was right on time. Reporter. I came a year after. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what you came with, with that whole raping thing, a year or so before, there was a GMS group being filmed by some white women reporters, 
And the whole time, GM, the, the GMS members are saying, we're going to rape your ass. Get this scripture, reading the scripture wrong, going in, going in. and saying that we're going to rape. And when we said, then there was another video where while they was at the street, on the street teaching, a woman came and knocked the camera down. Gotcha. So what we said was, we have to protect ourselves because they don't see the differences. So they ain't going to see no ISBK, GMS, or whatever. They're going right. to say, these is black Israelites. So how do we separate ourselves? We started saying that we are not affiliated with no Israelite group. Gotcha. And a lot of people look at that as... All right, let's hit on that. Now, I'm, I'm going to touch in on that topic, man. I'm going to tell you what's going on with uh, ISBK and guys like that. All right. We we have this, this book of ours, this thing of ours. All right. This is a, 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 a book from the Middle East with Middle Eastern philosophies, a code of ethics and principles that came from uh, the Middle East. All right. We, we are Middle Eastern men, and our book is an ancient book that was written in ancient time past in, um, on the Eastern Hemisphere, okay? So what these guys try to do is equivalize this book and bring it over here in the West and, and put 21st century philosophies that come from the so-called white man and put it on the doctrine that was a Middle Eastern doctrine of life that was given to us in ancient time past, man. And you can't do that. You're always going to go off. And that's what these camps do. That's why they're so soft. And, and, and they, 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 they still are in that so-called white man's mindset. They're still a de- thinking like a degenerate so-called white man. All right? When you when you understand how the ancient world was, ro- was um, how the ancient world was, All right. You got to become a historian to understand what's written in the book. All right. You can't look at how things are done in these this 20th century modern time. And then when you read the scriptures, uh, try to equivalize it to how things are done now. Things are there night and day. In fact, let me get a precept. This is uh, Isaiah. Twenty nine. This is Isaiah 29 and 16. Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. This devil has came in the earth and he's put a covering cast over the earth. And he's called um, evil good and good evil through philosophy. All right. Through dogma. Okay. Through his um, his so-called educational industrial complex. He's turned things upside down. He's made right, wrong and wrong, right. Okay, for shall the work say unto him that made it, he made me not. Should a thing frame say unto him, you framed it, he have he had no understanding. All right, this is what this devil has done, man. He's the the the, the prescribed order that our heavenly Father gave the sons of the power to follow. This devil has has uh, set his uh, his self up as if he's the Most High. And he's turned things upside down and he's telling the creator, I'm right and you're wrong. All right. And when he when he teaches uh, uh, our people on, in this wetness, this Western Hemisphere in the land of our ca- captivity, his philosophy. All right. Our people hold fast on to it. But instead of doing what the scriptures tell us to do, this is uh, John chapter three, verse three. And it reads. And Yahweh shall say unto them, Verily I say unto thee, except thee be born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. All right. When they say be born again, that means you have to become like a baby. A baby is like a blank CD. All right. So you have to unlearn everything you learn. All right. And to and and learn this doctrine of life. All right. This is uh this is uh first Peter. Chapter two, verse two, and it reads as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. All right. So the most I keep liking us to babies. What's a baby? A baby has to be taught everything. And guess what? A baby, like I just said, is like a blank CD. So when you come into this truth, you got to be like a baby and you got to relearn and be retaught everything you ever know. 
got it. Let me get one more. That's the spirit. This Romans 12 and 2. And it reads. All right. And be not conformed to this world. This world is, is what we were taught from uh, preschool to the 12th grade. And if some of you went to college. All right. Everything we were taught here in this white man, so-called white man's cosmos. All right. That's uh, of the world. All right. Business and commerce. Uh, what else? The scriptures. All right. Everything that he taught us how to how to uh, deal with courtship. All right. Everything the so-called white man taught us how to educate your children. Everything he taught us. You have to put that away. All right. You have to throw everything aside that you were taught history when it comes to history, botanicals, everything. You got to put everything he taught us away. OK. You can't conform to that anymore, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. All right. So you have to be retarded. You got to become like a baby and get the sincere milk and you got to learn history again. All right. You have to learn the, uh, the, the ways of the ancients again, because that's the ways that we're getting back to. All right. And prove that, which is prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of your All right. And you do that. By becoming a blank CD and uh, wearing out the doorstep of a man that has this doctrine of life and learning under. All right. These guys at ISUPK, they are it, guys that know they're Israelites, but they still have a 21st century mindset. They don't have the ancient men of old mindset like the, our elders of Great Millstone, man, who taught us this truth uh, 100% uncut. All right. I'm going to get one more precept and then I'm going to get into straight to the point. This is uh, Jeremiah 6 and 16. And it reads, thus save Yahweh, stand in the ways and see and ask for the old path. All right. This is an ancient book. All right. Our, our um, patriarchs were ancient men of old. The most I called them righteous men. When you read. Uh, Hebrews 11 and tell you how righteous these men were. These men were of good report. So things written a fourth time were written for our learning. We got to learn how to be like them and do what they did and rock out how they did. Not in this 21st century things we were taught. All right. And I'm going to get to the point where is the good way and walk therein and you shall find rest for your souls. But they said we would not walk therein. This guy, Captain Tazariak, say he's not he's not dealing with that uh, that rape issue. All right. Oh, man, you raped my daughter. I don't want to get no 50 shekels. All right. Well, you're not dealing with the scriptures. You're dealing with what the so-called white man taught you to do about rape. All right. We have to follow what the scriptures say. Now I'm, I'm going to get into he say. On that clip, he said the rape issue. All right. So I'm going to get straight to the point. What about the rape issue, man? We deal with the scriptures. We don't deal with our emotions and we don't deal with the so-called white man's rhetoric at all, man. That's cast aside. All right. When what he says do and his, his judicial system and his laws, that's not we don't deal with that. We deal with the laws, statutes and commandments. of Yahweh Shai. You got to bring out what does say of the Lord. All right. So I'm going to go to this rape issue, which we touched on plenty of times, but I'm doing it. For edification's sake, this is uh Second Samuel thirteen and one. All right, now we about to read a case of rape. All right, and then we're gonna see what happens, what's supposed to happen when somebody gets raped. Okay. All right. Uh, and it came. I'm gonna start at the top and read on down. And it came to pass after this that Absalom, the son of David, had a fair sister whose name was Tamar, and Ammon, the son. Ammonon, the son of David, son of David, loved her. And Ammonon was so vexed that he fell sick for his sister, Tamar, for she was a virgin. And Ammonon thought it hard for him to do anything to her. But Ammonon had a friend whose name was Jonadab, the son of Shemuel, David's brother. And Jonadab was a very subtle man. And he said unto him, why art thou being the king's son lean from day to day? Would thou not tell me? And Ammonon said to him, I love Tamar, my brother Absalom's sister. All right. They had different mothers. And Jonadab said unto him, lay thee down on thy bed and make thyself sick. And when thy father cometh to see thee, say unto him, I pray thee, let my sister Tamar come. 
and give me meat and dress the meat in my sight that I may see it and eat it at her hand. And Ammonon lay down and made himself sick. And when the king was was come to see him, Ammonon said unto the king, I pray thee let tomorrow my sister come and make me a cup of cakes in my sight that I might eat at her hand. Then David said unto, said, then David sent home to Tamar saying, go now to thy brother in the Ammon house and dress him meat. So Tamar went to her brother Ammon's house and, and laid down. And he, and he was laid down and she took flour and netted it and made cakes in his sight and did bake cakes. And she baked, took a pan and poured them out before him and refute and he, but he refused to eat. And Ammon said, have all, have all men from, have out all men from me. And they went out every man from him. And Ammon said unto Tamar, bring me the meat to the chamber that I might eat of thine hand. And Tamar took the cakes which he had, had made and bought them to the into the chamber to Ammon her brother. And when she had bought when she had bought them unto him to eat, he took hold of her and said unto her, Come live with me, my sister. And she answered him, Nay, my brother, do not force me. All right. And I would then time we would say, Do not rape me. Okay? For no such thing ought to be done in Israel. Do not thou this folly. And I will and and I whither shall I cause my shame to go? And whether shall I cause my shame to go? So like you. And as for thee, thou shalt be as one of the fools in Israel. Now therefore I pray thee, speak unto the king, for he would not withhold me from thee. How bet he would not hearken unto her voice, but being stronger than she, forced her and lay with her. So he raped her. All right. So he raped her. Now, according to the scriptures, we have a law. We have statutes. We have commandments. All right. For everything, for anything that happens. We got a law and statute commandments for murder. All right. We have law and statute commandments for, for, for thieves. We have a law and statutes and commandments for uh, homosexuals. We have commandments for uh for if you use somebody's property and you you uh you break it, we have commandments for uh civil situations. All right, we have we have commandments for anything that can happen, man. We have commandments for if two men fight and a woman is pregnant and and they bump into the woman and she lose the baby, we have a law for that. Okay, we have laws for if if a man doesn't leave an heir. He dies before he has a son to uh, inherit his property. We have a law that tells us what what to do, so that so that guy can um so his so there could be an heir to inherit to get an inheritance that comes from him. We have laws for everything. So you mean to tell me we don't have a law for rape? All right. Let's see what the scripture says happened in this situation. All right. Ammon raped, raped his sister Tamar. All right. Now let's see what the law say is supposed to happen. Let's deal with the scriptures. Let's not deal with emotions, man. We don't deal with emotions and how we how, and what we were taught here in America. All right. The way of this world. All right. All right. Now the scripture said that Tamar was a virgin, right? All right, this is Deuteronomy 22 and 28. If a, a man find a damsel that is a virgin, okay, which is not betrothed, she was not betrothed, and she was a virgin, and he lay hold on her, lay hold on her means rape her, and lie with her, and they be found, then the man that lay with her shall give unto the damsel father 50 shekels of silver. All right, now if you go kill that man, you going off. Because the law tells you that you have to give her father 50 shekels of silver, man. All right? That's the that's what you deal with a situation like that. All right, now you're not going to have a good name amongst men. All right? It's still going, you know, going off. But, you know, you're, you got to know how to, ain't it, when you're dealing with the issue of rape, we just dealing with the scriptures and show what happened with, 
Well, if somebody was raped in the ancient world, does that mean we raping women now? No. If you're going to say men in Great Millstone are raping women now, you're the one bearing false witness. You're going to be accountable for every idle word that came out of your mouth. I mean, it's simple, man. If somebody raped somebody, you're going to be under the jail. All right? So if you're going to get let your emotions flare and you get so angry, you say men of Great Millstone is raping women and you, have, you can't prove it. Uh, the Book of Thessalonians say prove all things and you can't prove it. That means you're bold-faced lying and the most high going to deal with you with it. But as it pertains to dealing with the issue of rape, we, we our beloved elders were saying, according to the scriptures, this is what the scriptures say should happen if someone rapes another person. OK. Now, he said, and then another thing he said uh, to, to Zariak said that they say uh, that they was telling a news woman, white woman that they was going to rape. Her. All right. In the ancient world. In the ancient world, see, you can't look at this modern day 21st century and equivalize it to the scriptures. We, we, we're ancient men. Oh, we talking about how shit go in the ancient world. When we uh, subdue the nations and take the kingdom, man, we're going to make their children slaves. Huh, let me get that. This is Leviticus. Leviticus, where you at, brother? Leviticus, oh, I think it's the 25th chapter. I ain't brought this one out in a minute. 25. This is it. I just got to find it. I just got to find it. Uh, all right. This is Leviticus 25 and 44. But both thy bondmen and bondmaids which thou shalt have shall be of the heathen that are round about you. Of them you shall buy and bond men and bond men and bond maids. And that's what happened when people go to war. All right. When you go to war with a person, with, with, a, with a nation, you make their, you, you normally kill the men in the ancient world and you take the women and spoil and you make the boys slaves, the girls slaves, and you have your way with their women. Are they women just going to come and lay down and give you that body? No, you got to take it. That's the way of the ancient world. Get another precept. Uh, Deuteronomy 21, around verse 10. And it reads, when thou goes to war against the enemy. See, we're dealing with the ancient world. Our Bible is an ancient book, man. We're not dealing with these modern times. All right? And the and Yahweh, thy power, have delivered them into thy hands. He's going to deliver these these white women into our hands, man. The nation of Edom. We're not even going to deal with that. He's going to deal these Moabites into our hands. He's going to he's going to give what what he say. We're going to have the nations as an inheritance. All right. Moab going to be our wash pot. All right. Edom is going to be in our hand. They're going to be our slaves. All right. All of them. All right. They're going to be delivered into our hands. And thou and thou has taken them captive, and thou see of among the captives a beautiful woman, and has a desire unto her that thou was love to have her to thy wife. That means have sex with her. That does not mean wife her like you would an Israelite woman. All right, your concubine is your wife because you're the only one could deal with her. Okay, but that's not the same wife as you would a fellow Israelite give you his daughter and you pay a dowry for. Her. No. This wife does not have the perks of an Israelite, okay? You could basically treat her like a a, a sex slave, okay? But an Israelite woman, the scriptures say you got to love your wife if you love yourself. You got to you gotta treat your wife well, all right? The Most High does, does, is not going to let you treat your wife like shit, all right? You're supposed to love your wife. If you eat steak and fettuccine, she eats steak and fettuccine. All right. The scriptures say you have to take care of your wife. I mean, if you take on another wife, your original wife, her um, her produce should not diminish. OK, you have to give her a due benevolence. But this is talking about a spoil of war. And you take her. You think when you kill her, her brothers and her fathers that she's going to come just lay down and have sex with you? No, you want to rough her up and take that, take that, take that thing from her. Take that uh, dude had me rolling the other day. Dude was liking a woman. He say, "Oh, cut your boy." The boy say, "You gotta, you gotta get that potato pie, <laughs> that sweet potato pie. You have to, you have to take that sweet potato pie, man. Okay, 
Then thou shalt bring her home to thine house and shall shave her head and pare her nails. You think she's going to let you do that? You got to subdue her, man. You got to humble her. You think she's just going to let you cut her hair off? All right? And she shall put on a raiment of her captivity from off her and shall remain in thine house and bewail her father and her mother for a full month. You see? Her, her mother and her father might be dead. During war, you kill everything. Okay? And thou shalt go in unto her and, and be her husband, and she shall be thy wife. All right? And that means she should just be thy property. All right? Because she's a heathen. Okay? That's the way the ancient world ran, man. You wasn't having no uh, seven-day festival, and she become your wife with no damn heathen. You just took her as your property, man. She was a bond woman, if anything. Okay? Now, I'm going to bring out this excerpt from how how things were done in the ancient world, man. All right. This is how you edify your people and show, man, this was common, a common knowledge in the ancient world. And when you deal with these historians, these history professors on various universities, they'll tell you that we're not going off that. This is an ancient book. This book is, uh, uh, is documented to 6,000 years ago, man. Okay. This is an ancient book, all right? Now, let's see what it says in Wikipedia. Wartime sexual violence, okay? Wartime sexual violence is rape or other forms of sexual violence committed by combatants during armed conflict. War or military occupation often spoils of war. This is, this is something that's been going on for millennia, all right? Yes, we're going to overtake our enemies and deal with their women harshly, all right? We're going to hear the lamentation of their women. Yes, we are. All right. But sometimes, particularly in ethnic conflict, the phenomenon has broader psychological motives. Wartime sexual violence may also indulge gang rape. Now, we ain't getting down like that and rape with other objects. And that's heathenistic shit. All right. It is distinguished from sexual harassment, sexual assault and rape committed amongst troop and military service. Okay. This is what happens when one nation occupies another nation. This has been going on for millennia, all right? During war and armed conflict, rape is frequently used as a means of psychological warfare in order to humiliate, humiliate the enemy. What did these devils do when they overtook us, all right? They killed a lot of us, and they had their way with our women. On the plantation, master had his way with your women, all right? Wartime sexual violence may occur in a variety of situations, including institutionalized sexual slavery. All right. Wartime sexual violence associated with specific battles or massacres and individual or isolated sexual acts of violence. OK. And this is biblical, man. This this is what used to happen in the ancient world. OK. All right. Now, let me get to the I'm going to get to. uh history to show that all right this was going on in biblical times all right uh, during our time that's why you can't equate uh when we talk about rape we're ancient men the elders of great millstone and their fruit when we talking about things we always funnel it through the scriptures we're talking about how things went during the times of the apostles how things went during the times of the prophets that's what we want when our great king come back we want to put our ways in the earth. We're going to be uh, uh, at the top of the totem pole and we're going to force our laws, our ways on the earth. We're going to be the rulers of the earth. OK, so when we speak, when we speak about things in the scriptures, rape. All right. We think we're talking about what happened in the ancient world, not in these modern times, the way things were dealt with in the ancient world. OK, rape in, in antiquity. Rape has accompanied warfare in virtually every known historical era. See, these guys' scholarship in, in ISUBK is entry level, okay? Writes women's historian, Gerda Lerner. See, when you talk to these historians, these history professors in these various universities, they're going to tell you, yes, all right, this is common knowledge. This is the way things were done in biblical times and even, you know, throughout um. Our, all nations and all races, 
This is the way um, rape was dealt with when one nation occupied another. Okay? The practicing of rape, raping the women of a conquered group, has remained a feature of warfare and conquest from the second millennium BC to the present. See, and they calling us rapists and shit. See, that's that's madness. That means you don't know history. All right, you got to understand history. That, that's your way of showing that you've conquered your enemy. Women are spoils of war. Beautiful women from other nations and races are spoils of war. And you have your way with them. All right? It is a social practice which, like the torture of prisoners, have been resistant to progress to humanitarian reforms. We're going to torture our prisoners. Prisoners. The scriptures say in Revelation the 18 chapter, the sixth verse, do to them double what they've done to us. All right. And it's written in another place to say, we're going to meditate terror on our enemies. All right. This, all this is biblical. All right. It is a social practice, which like the torture of prisoners have been resistant to progress to humanitarian reforms. Now in these modern times, a lot of those things that was done in ancient times is not done anymore. And to so, so sophisticated moral ethic and ethical considerations. I suggest that this is the case because the practice built into a, essential to the structure of pa uh, uh, patriarchal institutions and inseparable from them. It is at the beginning of the system prior to class formation that we can see this is, is in, in its purest essence. All right. The, Bi the Bible. See, that's sad that a, a heathen knows the Bible and understand uh, and, and can equate history uh, and knew what happened in the ancient world during biblical times. And a guy that pro pro professed to be a teacher of the most highest elect don't know shit. These, these other camps are entry level when it comes to scholarship, man. All right. For I will gather all the nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the houses plundered, and the women taken. All right. Now this is another uh that that's 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 another version. All right. That's not the King 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 James version. That's Zechariah 14 and 2. Their little children shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes, and their homes shall be sacked, and their wives ravished. All right, that says taken. That's another version. All right. So let me go ahead and get it accurate. We get Zechariah 14 and 2. All right. And what is it talking about? She was talking about things that was going during during the BC times, millennium. That's what happens when people are overtaken. So when he says, when he says that uh there was a great millstone with, with, with on camera telling the news reporter what they're gonna do to him, even though that has not been seen. I don't know if that's true or not. But speaking hypothetically as it was, they were speaking according to what happens when our great king come back and we subdue the nations and we overtake them. We are going to do that. All right. We are going to do that. All right. For I will gather all nations against the Jerusalem, against Jerusalem, the battle and the city shall be taken and the house rifle and the women ravaged. That's what happened to us. That's what happened. That's what they did us. They took over, took our head, our houses, spoiled us, and ravished our women. And half, of the city, and half of the city shall go forth into captivity. That's what you do in a time of war. All right? Now, let me go to Revelation chapter 18, verse 6. And it reads, reward her even as she rewarded you. That's what they did us. They spoiled us and ravaged our women, right? And double unto her according to her works. We're going to do to them double. In the cup which she had filled, filled, filled to her double. Okay? This is scriptural, man. It's not personal. All right, let me get back to this clip. All right? I'm going I'm to go back. Uh, I'm going to go down because it's a lot. I read it earlier. All right? Let's see what happened. I'm not going to read the Vikings. Because I'm prepped for time. Oh, yeah. Oh, here it goes to all uh, nations. All right. Right here it goes in the Vikings, what they did when they conquered areas in Europe in the 8th and 11th century. They raped and pillaged in, 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 Brit in Britannica and Ireland. And um, they spoiled the women. All right. 
they say during the sub-Saharan slave trade, the Arab world, that's what they did. They took our women and they raped our women and they spoiled our women. This is what happened through all history. When one nation occupies another nation, the Mongols who established the Mongol empire across much of Eurasia caused much destruction during the invasions. Documents written during or after Genghis Khan's reign, say that after conquest, the Mongol soldiers looted, pillaged, and raped. That's what they do. Genghis Khan, who I think was an Israelite, all right, I read a lot of his quotes. You know, I'm not, I, you know, just, I think he's Israelite, me speaking as a man. All right, but this is what happened. All right? This is what happened when, in the ancient world, when one kingdom, all right, I'm going to read the Vikings. The Vikings, Scandinavians, who raided and colonized the wide, Areas of Europe from the late 8th century to the early 11th century have acquired a reputation of rape and pillage. Viking settlement, settlements in Britain and Ireland are thought to be have been primarily male enterprises and a lesser role for Viking females. British Isles women are mentioned in old texts on the founding of Iceland, indicating that the Viking explorers had acquired wives and concubines from British and Ireland. They conquered them and acquired wives and concubines from them. Some historians dispute the Vikings' rape and pillage, all right? But that's what they did. You see, and I don't even want to read up here about the Romans. Because, right, the Greek and Roman armies, all right, um, I don't even want to read this shit. They, and you know, that's history. They would they when they would um beat people on on the battlefield when the men lay there dying those homosexual Romans and Greeks would rape the men while they were on the ground dying, all right. So that's some vile shit. But that's the basis of men. That's Esau. That's how he get down. So when they overtook the Persians, man, them dudes was having sex with the men on the the, the the everybody they overtook. They was having sex with them when they overtook the men, man. And you know it it gets explicit, but. As he as it pertains to the topic at hand, man. All right, polite is a, a infidel, and these guys in ISUPK are going off. All right, and they're they're going to be held accountable by Yahabba Shimawasha for bearing false witness against the elders of Great Millstone and for teaching lies, man. Because our people are going to live to see uh, the nation of Israel uh, conquer the other nations and spoil them, and and we have our way with their women, man. You're not going to be able to get around it. So you're going to see who's teaching lies and fallacies and who has the truth. Great Millstone is the home of the truth. So with that, Lord willing to sit down with edifying to the hearers, I'm going to give infinite honors to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem, and Karko Dash. I want to give double honors to our teachers, the apostles of Great Millstone, and salutation to my fellow ladies in Yahweh Shai. Uh, Kwam Yashara Baba Ba.